This episode is a tale of two egg retrievals, both alike in dignity. Those are two different authors. I won't do that again. In college, my gay best friend and I joked that if we hadn't found love by 40, we'd have a baby with each other. 20 years later, I'm pulling the ripcord. From deciding on solo motherhood to choosing IVF, I'm Meredith, and this is The Backup Plan. I have now completed two egg retrievals. The first one was in April, the end of April to be precise, and this last one was here at the end of June. I jumped into the second one as soon as I could. When I found out that the genetic tests weren't what I wanted, I said, when can we jump into this as quickly as we can? And thankfully it lined up with my cycle. So didn't do one in May, but I've done one in June. And maybe it's the last one I have to do. I went ahead and I made a spreadsheet because I am a spreadsheet queen. If you are listening to this via podcast, which I really appreciate, great, but you might want to check this out on YouTube if you're a visual learner because I am going to be referencing numbers and stuff and just, I don't know, for me, holding numbers in my head just like <laughs> doesn't work. So let's talk first about April's egg retrieval. First and foremost, I just want to say that although it was the first time around, I did have a lower stress level at that time. I was nervous about doing things right, but I was slightly less stressed back in April. My treatment schedule ran from April 11th to April 25th, which is when I triggered, and then April 27th was my egg retrieval. In total, I took 15 days worth of medication. What was that medication, you may ask? Well, I was on 300 units of Folistim from April 11th to April 21st. I bumped up my medication at my doctor's recommendation, I didn't do it myself, to 350 units on April 22nd, and I rode that through April 25th. I was consistently on two vials of Menopure at that time, it's 150 units total. And then I took 18 units of Zomactin daily for the first eight days, I don't have that information, it might have been seven days. I accidentally threw away about like two or three days worth of Zomactin and part of me is kicking myself thinking that maybe that's the reason things didn't go as well. Spoiler alert. When it came time to trigger, I took 80 units of Lupron and 5k of Navarel. That's what my instruction said. I just followed everything to a T. I don't know what 5k is, but that's how much I took. Let's talk about results. I grew about 20 follicles in that time. My follicle size was between 5.7 millimeters and 21.9 millimeters. Seven of those 20 follicles were over 15 millimeters. Quick word to the wise here, if there is a follicle in you that is over 15 millimeters, there's an 80% chance that there is a mature egg in there. Now, while I only had seven 15 millimeter plus follicles in there, we retrieved nine eggs, which was great. Super excited about that until I learned that only three of them were mature. Of those three, all of them fertilized, and two made it to embryo status. Of those two blastocysts, only one survived all the PGTA testing and is currently sitting in a freezer. Okay, now is the point where I'm gonna hold up my phone and talk about a spreadsheet that I'll show you right here. Okay, so what I think is really interesting here is you can see how many more follicles I had on the left side. My ultrasound tech at the time was like, your left side likes to party. So we're gonna go ahead and assume that the biggest follicles were the ones that produced the mature eggs. I can't be sure of this, nobody can be sure of this at this point. Just for the sake of having a fun time and guesstimating what went on in my body, you can see that the lighter color is the one that didn't produce a mature egg. So a 20.5, a 21.9, and an 18.9 were the ones that probably gave me what I was looking for. It's a bummer. But let's talk about June's response. In June, my stress levels were just higher. I had some family drama going on. My mom came back into town and while I was so glad that she was here and she could help out, she had her own drama going on with the sale of a house that she has in Florida. She had a health concern. There were just like a, a bunch of things going on. So my brain wasn't entirely focused on, this is me, this is my journey. I'm gonna be like completely, totally selfish. I had to do other things. I had one day less of medication, 14 days. From June 5th to June 18th, I was medicating myself. The medication was a little bit different. I was on 300 units of Folistim throughout. Menopure was the one that we kicked up. I ended up taking three vials of that rather than just the two vials. I went up to 225 units rather than 150 that I was on in April. 
Instead of Zomacted, I used Omnitrope this time. I am told they are the same, maybe? They're both human growth hormone. In terms of dosage, I was taking 35 units. Now, I don't know how different the dosage was between the Zomactin and the Omnitrope, so I don't know if I was taking double the amount or if that's just the way that this medication worked. When it comes to the trigger shot, I used Lupron again, or Luprolide. It was the same dosage, it was 80 units. Instead of using Novaril this time, I used Pregnil. I have no idea what the dosage difference is between Pregnil and Novaril, but I was taking 10,000 IUs, <laughs> so I don't know if it's double the amount or what. All right, well, the internet tells me that Novaril and Pregnil are the same thing and that they are uh, urinary derived human products. So that's fun. <laughs> All right, let's talk egg numbers. This is the part where it gets exciting. I had 14 follicles that were growing. I was pretty bummed about this. I never counted it out through the process, but I could tell it was lower just by looking at the screen. Um, after I did all this research and, and looked at how many fewer follicles I had, I was like, wow, I'm glad I didn't do that earlier because I would have gotten a lot sadder. Of those 14 follicles, we got 11 eggs, 11 eggs came out of me. When I woke up, I started recording myself because I like watching videos of myself drugged and the <laughs> doctor came in. Please enjoy this. Now egg. Oh. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm recording myself. <laughs> You're recording yourself? Why are you recording yourself? Because well, I'm recording all of it. I'm doing a podcast on oh. my whole Ron Com situation. Oh, you're so funny. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to give you the update. We got 11. Oh, right. Yeah, much more than I anticipated. Yeah. So I wouldn't expect all of them to be mature, though, you know, but well, definitely. We're going to listen, I'm mature. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but definitely good to start off with, you know, higher numbers. It was um, nine before. So. Awesome. Yay. Love it. Um, well, the lab will keep you updated tomorrow on how mm -hmm. many are mature and fertilized. And then Can after... you, like, see when they come out? Like... I can't because okay. everything's microscopic. So my goal is just to try and get every drop of fluid that I can okay. um, and then hand it off to embryology. I appreciate that because I have not been able to sit up straight. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, hopefully, hopefully this helps. And um, yeah, the lab will keep you updated. So tomorrow and then also after seven days with how many you get to lab. Right. Any questions for me? No. I just, I just want babies. Right. I hope you get them. Again, it's good to, good starting place for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Any yeah. other questions? No, I hope this is the last time I see you. I, don't know. <laughs> I hope so too. I hope so too. I wish you all the best. And wish you, um, you know, good luck for all the numbers. Yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah, Happy I got it. to do it for both of them. Happy retreat. Yeah. 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 Um, but wish you all the best. So. Thank you. All right. I'll talk right. to you later. Bye. Bye. Take care. Very happy to report that when I got home a few hours later, I learned that of those 11 eggs, eight were mature. So, I mean, a difference of five eggs is just huge for me, huge for a lot of people. I was so fucking excited. And then later that night, um, Whitney, who was on a couple episodes ago, she called me up and was asking me how I was doing, how I was feeling. And while I was on the phone with her, I got an email saying that of those eight mature eggs, seven have fertilized. There is a slight chance there may have been an eighth fertilization. I haven't heard from the doctors yet, and I'm recording this on Monday. I'm gonna be releasing it on Wednesday, so I should have time to insert here a little bit more information about how many blastocysts we made. Hey cuties, editor Meredith coming in at the last moment to let you know that there isn't a lot of information to share. I was hoping we would have some day five blastocysts today, it looks like we have one, but it's not ready to call until maybe tomorrow, so it might be a day six blastocyst. The eighth possible fertilized egg didn't happen, so there are only seven fertilized eggs total, and all of the other ones are showing development, but nothing that can be called at the moment. So um, it's been disappointing news today, but uh, nothing's conclusive yet, and I'm trying to stay positive. Yeah, that's difficult. Are you ready for the next spreadsheet? I think you are. The highlighted cells here are the eggs that were retrieved. The darker color are the ones that we got mature eggs from. 
What's wild to me is that this go around, theoretically, I had mature eggs come from an 11.7, whereas last go around, let's just pull up the whole chart, why don't we? The last go around, the smallest follicle that retrieved a mature egg was 18.9. Like, that's just crazy, right? It's just such a huge difference. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm just elated this time. I'm just so excited. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that spreadsheet up on the website if you wanna take a look at it and do some studying. If you're a data nerd like I tend to be sometimes, I mean, I'm really just more spreadsheet nerd. Christina's been calling me spreadsheets lately. It's just fun to watch, it's fun to look at, and it's fun to analyze when the results are good. And that's just how I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling really good about things. What else did I do differently? I want to tell you I did yoga every day. I want to tell you I got exercise every day. I want to tell you that I was eating this like green goddess bountiful diet. No. Um, the other like major change this go around is I ate chicken. I am mostly a vegetarian. Uh, if I travel, if I go to some foreign land where like nobody is a vegetarian, like Korea, I'm gonna eat meat there. If I go to some place that has some delicacy that like I really want to get the flavor of where I'm at, I'm gonna do that. If I'm craving a Big Mac, God damn it, I'm gonna get a Big Mac. But generally speaking on my day to day, I'm not eating meat. This time I kind of made it my duty to do that. There were days where I was eating like three scrambled eggs as well. I did hard boiled eggs. And then, I mean, yeah, I was stressed out. <laughs> That didn't feel great, but maybe it helped. I don't know. It was nice having my mom here, but she's not always like incredibly helpful when it comes to things. Like I'll have to remind her to be helpful. <laughs> I mean, it was really great though to have her like to come out of the operating room and the recovery room and come out and tell her how many eggs we got. There she is. Okay. 11. Oh, good. Got more. Eight were mature and fertilized. Oh, shit. Eight out of 11? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, she updated me at 1130 and said, I see seven mature eggs. Stay, t stay tuned for finalized results. And now it's, it's eight. Literally, Whitney, you're getting this news as I'm getting it. My mom's getting it. Oh, shit. That is wild. Eight? Oh my god. Eight. We can have octagons, kids. We're not gonna have a <laughs> octagon. Yes. <laughs> Whatever the doctor lady. Yeah. <laughs> That's holy so shit. If terms of other things that happened, I would say that I was more tired. I had less bruising this time. My boobs didn't get as big. Um, they did at the very end, but like throughout the process they didn't. At the very end, they hurt, and I felt like they were, like, more tender throughout last time. And I definitely had, like, a crazy mental fog, like, the entire time. And since the egg retrieval, I would say that my innards have gotten working faster. <laughs> Side effect of anesthesia. I'm feeling more bloated. Like, I want to just push my belly down, and it, it's not doing anything. It's just staying big. But that's it. I'm kind of surprised at how quickly the body recovers. I'm still incredibly exhausted, but also it's a seasonal change, which I always find myself more tired around a seasonal change. And it also suddenly has gotten very, very warm. Also makes me tired. So um, yeah, that's uh, the tale of two egg retrievals. I am so excited to give more updates next week because I feel good. I felt good in the past and it hasn't turned out great, but I don't know, just being perpetually optimistic about this process and hoping, hoping we're just on the road to the next stage. So thanks for coming along. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. If you're watching on YouTube, comment below, check me out on Instagram. And um, if by any chance you're at VidCon this year, it's right down the street from me, so I'm going. So reach out and let me know. And have a great week. Wish me luck, cross fingers, and see you guys later. The Backup Plan is created, produced, and hosted by me, Meredith Kate. Julian Hagens is my co-producer. You can find us on social media at Backup Plan Pod. 
The best place to get updates is to sign up for our newsletter at backupplanpod.com, where we also post all episodes, show notes, and transcripts. Thank you for listening. 